presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. sins and my sorrows he made them his very own he bore the burden to calvary and suffered and died alone how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how Man, my, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. You can be seated. So glad you're here. You glad you're here? Say amen. amen. Wonderful, wonderful. My, I'm telling you, we are so privileged to be in the house of the Lord on a Sunday morning here in January and to have Pilgrim Ministry with us. Amen. Brother Shannon Tucker's here, and thank God he's here. Hey Amen. He said it this morning, Brotherhood, it's good to be seen. I said, yeah, rather than be viewed. That's what Brother Bobby says all the time. He said, I'll say amen to that. I'm telling you. And thank God for the touch of God on his life. We're going to hear from him in a little while and from some of these guys from Pilgrim Ministry in a little while. And we're excited about that. Amen. We're excited about that. Amen. Oh, yes, we are. Because, see, that's God doing something in somebody's life. You excited about God doing something in somebody's life? Boy, I am. I'm telling you, I've been telling folks this week and uh, and uh, talking about the Lord this week. I talked to a girl on the phone, had a call, and uh, you know, you know, you have have those situations sometimes where you have to call, have a little problem with something, you know. And so I was calling to follow up on something that I business transaction I transacted and. And just calling about it, you know, and the girl said, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Smith, I'm going to I'm gonna have to transfer you. You're going to need to talk to customer service in another department, and you're going to need to talk to them, get this number, and, and then you'll have to send it in before we can do that. I said, okay, no problem. She put me on hold, got, got another person on the phone, and then she come on there, and uh, she said, uh, it was about my wife's phone. You know, she had a little problem with the phone. And, 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 and Jam come on the phone. Now, I've never talked to a lady named Jam, brother. I'll just be honest with you. I, I've talked to a lot of people that had strange names, but this lady's name was Jam. And I said, okay, Jam, let me tell you my situation. I just told her what I needed. She said, okay, we can get that for you, Mr. Smith. And she said, is this your phone? I said, no, this is baby's phone. She said, baby? I said, oh, yes, my wife's phone. Been married 44. Oh, 44 years. She said, how do you make it 44 years? I said, God. <laughs> Boy, she opened the door, and here we went. Amen. I said, honey, it has been a lot of times in 44 years that she'd have walked out on me if it hadn't been for God. And a lot of times I'd have walked out on her if it hadn't been for God. But God is the glue that holds you together when nothing else will. It's amazing what God can do in your life. Do you know God? No, I don't, I don't. You have a Bible? I said, no. I said, get you a Bible, girl. I told her, I said, you email me. You call me. We'll talk about this some more. Not, not around customer service. We'll talk about it off of Oh, I'm telling you, the opportunities you have to talk about what God's doing in your life. Woo! And we're going to hear about that this morning. Y'all don't get me sidetracked. Brother Shannon's going to preach in a little while. Don't get me sidetracked. And he's got his beautiful wife with us, with him. And uh, she's here this morning, and she's got a beautiful ministry. Maybe we'll get her to say something about that. 
before she leaves here today, too. Let's pray together. Let's, uh, let's just don't give the devil a minute. Let's pray together and let's just charge on and ask God to help us today. He knows what we stand in need of. And let's ask God to just really speak to us. Don't you want God to speak to you this morning? That's what I come for. Hear from him. And boy, I'm glad he's ready to, ready to meet with us. Aren't you? Let's pray. Father, I'm so thankful. For your love, mercy, and grace, I just want to praise you for what I've already heard this morning, Brother Andy's message during Brotherhood, and then, Lord, for the opportunity to just come and gather in your house with your people and to know, Lord, that you're here, ready to meet with us and ready, to Lord, to speak. And, Lord, I just want to be attentive and hear from you and let the Holy Spirit speak to me. Lord, I pray that you just, Lord, you just fan out all over this congregation. You know the hearts and lives and needs of every person here, every person on the sound of my voice, and Lord, you've got the answer. You are the answer. Lord, you're ready to meet those needs in accordance with your own perfect will. Lord, I pray, oh God, you just touch now. May you be exalted here this morning. And Lord, may you be the center of attention. May you be lifted up. We'll praise you for all that you do in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. All right, Brother Daniel.
Let's all stand as the choir comes down this morning. Say, I'm glad I'm saved this morning. We'll sing a song about my best friend. Amen. And I hope you know him, and I hope he's your friend as well. Sister Gail, what a wonderful song. Hallelujah. What a wonderful song. What a wonderful go along with the service song. God orders things, don't he? Amen. Our preacher today, and uh, he's going to come and introduce Pilgrim Ministry for us, Brother Shannon Tucker. Come on, he's no stranger around here. We thank God for him, what God's done in his life. He can tell you about that if the Lord leads him that way. And you just come on obey the Holy Spirit, Brother Shannon, everything will be fine. Thank Amen. You, yes, sir. Guys, I want y'all to come on and yes, amen. you hear hear me right here though. Yeah, but I don't have it turned on yet. We're gonna do both. Leave this one on for them. I'm just gonna wait and use this one in a minute. Is that okay? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, come on, guys. Y'all surround me. Yes, sir. Uh, this this church right here, Four Mile Baptist Church. Supports us monthly. They support us through love offerings, and uh, they've they've supported me and my family personally in the last few months. Uh, been to my house. I, I got some pictures I'm passing around. I have another picture of uh, have another picture that I showed them. I'm not going to pass my phone around. I do need to get that back uh, when I leave today. But 
Y'all, y'all look at those pictures. That's just kind of what, what, what I've been through in the last few months. Had a stroke back in November, two strokes actually. And uh, God, God brought me through it. There were people praying for me. And uh, so this church has been a big supporter of me and my family, and I, I'm so grateful for that. And I'm glad to be here today to tell you all about my friend named Jesus. And I hope you know him today. You're gonna, I hope you hear about him today. Um, I, before these guys come, I just want to share with you, we, we're building a ministry here in Chattooga County up uh, in Taloga beside my property, actually. The ministry bought 50 acres beside us, and uh, we're building 30-something men facility. Um, it could be bigger than that eventually, but it's going to start out with 32 men. And um, we do have the go-ahead on that. We have uh, the green light to go ahead and start building um, from the, uh, the chairman of uh, the board, Y'all know about this, the people who've been buying property in Chattooga County and building it, they've got a board now with the county where you have to be uh, associated with them. You got to, anyway, we got the green light. And uh, so we've got the, the property's been bought. Um, we're still raising money for that ministry, but that, that's something that support churches are helping us with. And just a great opportunity. I'll, I'll just tell you, I was the first person from Chattooga County to go to Pilgrim Ministries, and that was in 2009. I was, I was actually looking at this Bible. Uh, this Bible that I have is dated 4609, so that was April the 6th of 2009. It's falling apart, and I, I probably had never shared this with Four Mile, but in 2009, my life was falling apart, and I hadn't read, hadn't read this old Bible much, but uh, the last... 14 or 15 years, my Bible started falling apart. And I've, I've got some more Bibles, like Brother Ricky said this morning. I've got several. But this is one I've been using for 14 or 15 years, and it started falling apart. And I'll tell you, I'll be the first to tell you today that I'm, my, my life's not perfect. My family can tell you I'm not perfect. But my life's not falling apart anymore. My Bible is. So I just share that with you just because my Bible is falling apart. And this is the one I found this morning, the KJV only. And uh, so I brought it with me. Thank you for my wife actually helped me find that. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to represent Pilgrim Ministries. I want you to hear from these guys. This, this, these are the guys. God's changing their lives. And... Uh, and, I, and, I've, and I've begged them, and, and we've told them, just tell the truth. Yeah. Just be honest with the, right. the church and tell the truth what God's doing in your life. That's right. And uh, God, God changed my life miraculously uh, 14 years ago in, in 2009. And, uh, put me on the, the straight and narrow, and I have no regrets. And uh, I, think, I want to thank you all personally for supporting our ministry, for supporting these men. Listen, for investing in my life and in their life. Because we're not just changing these guys. We're changing their family. We're changing, we're changing a lot of things. And uh, that's, that's what we've been talking about all morning. Not, not just saving people, but changing people. Changing the way we live our lives and, and who we represent and how we're going to represent Him. And it's only through the Spirit of God that I can represent Him accurately. And uh, so I will say that... Uh, well, I've already told you about us building the ministry here. Um, we, we have uh, a lot of support churches in this area that are supporting Pilgrim Ministries. We have a lot of people that are naysayers, too. I don't, I don't know if y'all have on. caught on to that, but there, there's a lot of that going on around here, too. But listen, the, 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 the bottom line is we're trying to help people win. It. And it's through Jesus Christ it, it. that you'll win. It's, it's just like the song we just sang. Uh, I'm shouting the victory this morning because of him, not because of me. Ain't nothing I've done. It's what he done for us that that'll change your life. And so, just just listen up, and hopefully these guys can share with you what God's doing in their life. Okay, Amen. thank you. Good morning. I'm Johnny Strickland. Uh, I've been in Stewart County all my life. It's right down the road, really. Uh, 
I've been in addiction probably 25 years and uh, was raised, went to church a few times, but not really a consistent thing. So I got in trouble last year and was waiting to go to prison for a third time, sitting in jail, and somehow, by the mercy of God, he gave me a chance to go to Pilgrim's Ministry. And when I got there, one of the facilitators there asked me if I believed Jesus Christ was the Son of God. And I told him I wanted to believe that, but I can't. I don't really believe that. I was bound for hell, no doubt. But through the curriculum and everything over there, they teach you. And all the Bible studies, I learned the truth. The, the true history of mankind is in the Bible. Yes. And uh, I got saved April the 6th last year. Hallelujah. And baptized. And since then, my life has turned 180. I mean, I've restored my relationship with my family. Yeah. And they're looking at me and they're seeing how my life has changed and it's changing theirs too. Amen. And it's a blessing. It really is every morning. I'm, I'm really excited to see where my future is going to go when I get, leave the ministry next month. Amen, brother. I, I definitely intend to stay in church, no doubt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's good, brother. <laughs> my name is uh, Jonathan Arnold. I'm 23 years old. And I never really grew up in church, but I went a few times. So I started smoking uh, smoking when I was 15, and when I was 18, I started doing harder drugs until I was 22. And then on March the 6th, I went to a Tom's Creek Baptist Church and got saved. And the next day, I went to Pilgrim Ministries and been learning about him, staying in his word. And I just, I just can't wait to see what he has in store for me. Adrian Rogers said, if you have a Bible that's falling apart, you, you have a life that's not. Amen. But, uh, my name's Barry Chambers. I'm 49 years old. I was born here in Somerville back when they'd done that. And uh, I've been a, I guess I was a functional alcoholic from the time I was 13. I've always worked, if I had to make, try to make a decent living for the family. And uh, lost my dad and 2016, that kind of sent me on a downward spiral out of control. It almost completely consumed me. Uh, drinking more, uh, started getting in trouble, on top of trouble, and got uh, I got into Pilgrim's Ministries. I got saved on January 4th, and I'm getting baptized next week. I'm looking forward for life with the Lord and my family, my new life. Yes. With the Lord yes. the and thank y'all. Uh, my name is Kelby Slayton. I'm 26 years old. Uh, I grew up in Tron my whole life, graduated from Tron. I didn't really ever grow up in church. The only thing I was religious about was sports. Uh, and it just, it, it led me down the wrong crowd. I started drinking when I was real young. And it led me to opiates. And when I, when my son was born, I had, I had around four years clean. But it was my addiction was just sitting there waiting on me. Uh, I, I relapsed, and it, it hit me like it's never hit me before. There's, I mean, there's no way to say, uh, uh, other way to say this that Pilgrims is a blessing. I, I don't know how I ended up here, but it had to be God. Amen. I shouldn't be here. I just. I'm I'm so grateful to be here. I just I hope that I can be the father and son that I once was, because I I don't like the person that I was, and I, I appreciate everything Shannon, Andy, Brian, everything they're doing. Sometimes sometimes I don't like Brian, but 99% of the time Brian is right. I mean I hate to admit it, but everything they're doing for me, it's it's crazy. I just don't believe I'd get it anywhere else. So thank y'all. Good morning. My name is Jonathan Arnold. Um, I'm actually not in the ministry anymore. I graduated about six months ago. Um, two years ago, there was no hope for me. I mean, if there was, you couldn't tell me. 
Um, I got arrested again for the umpteenth time. And by the grace of God and the grace of Andy Pilgrim, I, I had the chance to go to Pilgrim Ministries. Um, at first, it was just like a get out of jail free card. Yeah. But you start seeing guys like Shannon, um, Shane Polly, Brian Holsey, Andy Pilgrim. They've all been there. They've all been me. And to see the way Jesus works in their life and transform them and them keep at it and keep at it and keep at it and then they're blessed abundantly. And, I mean, life's just good. Um, so um, I reaffirmed my faith. Um, about a year and a half ago, I was baptized at Tom's Creek Baptist Church. Um, I made it through the ministry. Um, I, I didn't move back here. I stayed out there. Um, I have an apartment. I'm, I have my own vehicle. I mean, I'm doing good. I'm staying in church. But uh, my son, he was the second one to speak. And um, it's just crazy that now that I'm 42 and he's 23 and I'm looking up to him. So. But thank y'all, thank y'all for supporting the ministry because, I mean, it really does help change lives. At the end of the day, it's the, um, it's the individual person, but the information is there, the opportunity is there, and a big majority of the guys do seem to take it. Amen. So thank y'all. I'll share a little bit of that with y'all. Um, I am thankful to be here today. Oh. Thank, thank you guys for just being honest and sharing what God's doing in your life. If you have your Bible today, I'm going to be in John chapter 1. And what, I, what I'd like to do is just share with you a little bit of my story over the past couple of months. This is, this is a verse that God gave me. While I was in a stroke, actually, I was in, I was in the hospital, and uh, I'm just going to try to do a, a, a message around this. I've got uh, four boys with us today. Two of them are probably going to be preachers. You can hear one he's trying to preach right now. He's 11 months old, <laughs> and uh, he's, he's growling, boy. Yeah. But uh, I got another one six years old, and... Uh, well, he likes to talk, too. These two right here, I was asking them to come and share a little bit this morning, but um, y'all may have heard them before, but they're excellent kids, and uh, God has really blessed us. We also have two girls in the back. Amen. I want to recognize, before I get started, I want to recognize this is my niece, Sonia. I grew up with her, and my wife, Joanna, y'all stand. Yes. 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 And she has baby yes. Christopher with us, and he is loud. Yes. I may have to... I may have to get real loud. I'm just going to use this mic because if y'all probably y'all might see me fall today if if uh, I'm navigating these steps. I thought that might be a better idea. Okay. I about broke the mic getting out of the pew, but uh, just that's just the way it is right now. I'm my balance is a little bit off because of the second stroke I had, <clears throat> and. Uh, but if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to John 1. That's where we're going to be today. Um, and, and as I get started, I just, I, I've passed a book around. It's got some pictures in it. It just kind of shows some of the things that happened. And I had a picture in there last night of some of the men from Four Mile Baptist Church that come to my house and pray with me, pray with my family. They called me and prayed with me, and uh, they're supporting me, and uh <laughs> through all this, so I, I really appreciate that. I think maybe my wife took those pictures out this morning, but we, we have some. Uh, we've sent some to the pastor, and I've, I've got some on my phone, but I, I just, um, it's just, it's just a little bit complicated to get. Sorry. It's okay. No, it's okay. No, no apologies. But you just kind of see where I've been through. I mean, and I'm going I'm to share a little bit of that with you, how, how God works through his people um <clears throat> so <clears throat> so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go back to the day of my stroke we me and my wife had had a 
a busy day. We'd had we'd we'd been to uh, I got my toes done that day. Uh, actually, it was a foot massage, and uh, but they did do did trim up my my nails and everything. It was kind of weird, but anyway, I know y'all guys are looking at me like I'm crazy, but I'm just being honest. Um, I did get a full body massage in the chair, and uh, we were. We had a hot tub at our cabin. I got in a hot tub. Anyway, it was a long day. I, I did work out in Fort Payne, Alabama that day for about an hour. And uh, me and my wife were on our way to Longhorns and Gadsden to eat. And uh, I was driving. And the stroke started happening. And uh, next thing I knew, it felt like my head was tilted sideways. And I lost all control. I had... I didn't, I didn't really, I was going down, is it I-7, is it, what, what is it says that? 59, I was on I-59 going south to Gadsden, and uh, I just lost all control, and somehow, it's a, no, it ain't somehow, it's a miracle from God yeah. that I got out of the lane I was in and got over yeah. to exit 205, isn't it 205, and uh, I told my wife several times, I said, I'm going out, I, I mean, like, I had I had lost all control, and uh, she helped me get the the truck over out of the lane, and um, we come to a stop at exit 205, which was actually an exit that they picked us up in and took me to Erlanger. Uh, during my stroke, I was I was in the middle of a stroke, and uh, l let me tell you, my wife is is awesome. I should have probably let her share a little bit. Uh, might, might do that before we leave, but anyway, um, <clears throat> she immediately started posting people on Facebook, people in our church, people in our old church that we used to be a part of, probably some of you guys seen it, but uh, I, immediately I had people praying for me, and I was in the middle of a stroke, and uh, <clears throat> it was real. That's all I can tell you. I don't. I don't really re remember a lot of my stay in the hospital. They said I had another stroke two days later, and uh, that's probably what got my vision a little bit and my balance. But um, but God has cleared up a lot of things in my mind. Um, I've come a long way since November. Um, my wife has. I, I, I'm not. I'm not glorifying her today. But man. She's a, she's a blessing that God sent into my life when I was at Pilgrim Ministries in 2011. I met her in a, in a, in a, in a Bible class, actually, and uh, that's, that's where I met her at. I had seen her before, but we got to know each other through the class and through sharing how God was working in our lives, and, and I realized that she had a relationship with the Father, and... Uh, Next thing I know, man, I asked her to marry me, and she said yes. So, so we got married in 2012, and, and 10 years later in 2022, November, we're, we're, we're on a honeymoon, really, celebrating 10 years of marriage and 10 years of God's blessing in our life. And uh, he's getting louder, ain't he? But anyway, she has been a blessing to me, and God, God knew when he placed her into my life that she would encourage me, she would challenge me, um, and she has done just that. So thank you for, thank you for that. So, so she immediately started posting people and posting, I guess, Facebook. I don't have Facebook, but I couldn't keep up with Facebook anymore. I can't even keep up with text most of the time. She texted me before church and told me she was here, and I didn't even get it. So you know what I mean. But anyway, enough about that. So, so I'm, I'm laying in the hospital having a stroke, and I just want to tell you kind of how it all unfolded for me. Um, I was saved, and I was on my way to heaven to meet Jesus Christ. And, and honestly, I was, I'm just being honest with you. I had this thing taped to my finger, with a light on it, and it kind of, I don't know what that is, some of y'all guys from the medical field, y'all know, know what I'm talking about, but I had it taped to this finger, and it had a light on it out here, and I had a blood pressure thing on this arm, and it kept blowing up, and I was thinking, man, I'm, 
still alive. You know what I'm saying? And 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 uh, I was in the middle of a stroke. I guess um, that thing would go. It, it would stop, and and I'd curl back up in the bed. And, and really, I was curling up to die. I was praying, and I was I was okay with dying. And I told this story later. I, I didn't realize it, but uh, I, it's the truth. I, I was curling up to die. And uh, that happened several times that night. Um, remember, I was on my way to Longhorns to eat, and I never got that ribeye. I was starving. By the next morning, I was hungry. And I was, I was telling them, man, I, I got to eat. I'm starving. I'm hungry. But, but anyway... Every two hours, that thing would kick on, and it would blow my arm up, and I would think, man, I'm still alive. And I'd look at that light, and that light was still on. And, and this verse started coming to my mind, the one that we're going to share with you today. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you, because I know it by heart. It's, it's John 1, 4. It says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Listen to verse 5. It says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So the light that that we're supposed to be reflecting to the world, and we've talked about it a a lot this morning. In Sunday school, we talked about it with Andy as he preached to us at Brotherhood. Man, we got to be different. And we ought to be shining a light into people's lives around us. But the Bible says that the darkness didn't comprehend it. It couldn't overcome the light. And so when God puts us in a situation at school tomorrow or at work tomorrow, I don't don't know who I'm preaching to, but I'm preaching to everybody. I'm preaching to me. When when God puts me into a situation tomorrow and I'm, I'm the only light in the room, I ought to be expelling light to people about my Savior, how, how He's changed me. And this is, this is one of the things that God started showing me in the hospital as I was laying there dying. And I started sharing it with some of the nurses, the doctors, and they were looking at me like, dude, you are crazy. But I kept sharing this verse. And this is a verse that I, I've loved this verse for a long time. And I love the Scripture. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to John chapter 1. I'm going to just read a few verses and then... Uh, I'll share with you. If you have your Bible, stand. Let's read God's Word. It's just in honor of His Word, we're going to stand and read it out, okay? John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. We talked talked about that just a little bit this morning. Everything that was created was created by Jesus Christ. That's what what John's telling us. He was in the beginning with God. He was there. It was the the Trinity was there in the beginning. If you want to turn it back to uh, Genesis chapter 1, it's the same thing. He's telling us. Verse 4 says, this is the verse, don't miss this, in Him was life. The life was the light of men. Can I just say one thing right here? And I know I'm, I'm not supposed to be preaching yet. I'm supposed to be reading, but, but life gives light. And if you have the light, if you have the life, if you have Jesus Christ living in, inside of you, you ought to be reflecting His light yes. to other people, to other men. When He says "man" here, He's talking about mankind, to women, to men. And let's don't get that mixed up, okay? God created man and woman, right. right? We can re- go back to Genesis one and read that too. There's not, there's not a, a, a different gender. It's, it's a man and a woman. Amen. Amen. It's called mankind. Yes. And Adam in the, in the Hebrew means mankind. Yes. That's who he's talking to. Verse 5 says, The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 
the darkness couldn't overcome the light. Because the light came from who? It came from the Word. The yes. Word is Jesus Christ. Amen. All right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. God, we thank you for a beautiful day that you have made. And thank you, Lord, just for the opportunity to be here today to worship you, to honor you, and to glorify you. And God, we just pray that while we're here, God, that we can exalt your name. God, that these people, maybe there's someone here today that don't know you. God, that wants to know you. God, that wants to have life in them. And God, that they could be the light that we should be reflecting to the people around us tomorrow. Today, even as we go out, the, out of these walls, Lord, that we would be the light that you've called us to be. I thank you, God, for the opportunity. I thank you for what you brought us through. I thank you for all the people that prayed for us during this time. And, Lord, I just pray that your will be done here today, God, and that people would come to know you. Lord, if, they're, if they are saved, God, that they would become the light that you've called them to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, while I was praying, I, I had this thought. I'm laying, I'm laying in there having a stroke. And and listen, if I'd have died, I would have I would have went and spent eternity with with the Lord. Yes. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Because according to His Word, I've done what it said to be saved. Yes. I am saved. I'm. But but God had a purpose for calling for for ha for even letting this happen in my life. Yes. And, uh, and while I was on my deathbed, I thought I was going to die. I really did. There was. And listen, here, here's the thing. <clears throat> a week or two later, like I said, the first week, I really didn't even know what was going on. My wife got me home. I, I started, my, my, my mind started healing a week later. And about two weeks later, I was at church. Matter of fact, I know I had, I had missed two Sundays. And I was at church, and these people were coming up to me, 30 or 40 people said, man, we've been praying for you. There's no doubt people have been praying for me. There was people praying for me during my stroke. And l listen, somebody said it at the ministry Friday. Uh, I mean, God, God hears the prayers of his people. Yes, sir. People were praying for me while I was having my stroke. Yes, there were people telling me at church on two, two weeks later, man, man, we've been praying for you. And God had begun healing my mind. He, and, and just, I'll, I'll just be honest with you. This is the first time I've actually preached a message. I preached the Sunday before I had my stroke up, up in Pimble at a church. This is the first time I've actually opened God's Word and preached from it. Now, I've done some Bible studies and done some devotions with some folks. And, man, God's Word is alive and it's powerful and it's, yes. it, and it's awesome. Yes. And I'm thankful for it. But putting together an introduction and a... And a sermon and then an invitation. I may have Brother Joel come and help me today. And, and the reason I tell you that is because it's affected my short-term memory more than it's affected my long-term memory. Thank God I had the word in me when I was having my stroke. That, that verse was coming to me during my stroke. I'd wake up and I'd look at and I'd say, there's the light. There's the light right there. I'm still alive. I, you know how I knew I was alive? Because I had the light in me. I still had his light shining in me. Yes. It was on it was on my whatever that was. It was running into my blood. Yeah. I've seen about a, a verse in Leviticus 16 that says life is in the blood. Yes. I'm not going y'all don't turn there. I'm not going to preach that message today, but that's a blood covenant that God gave us. Yes, life is in our blood. Yes. And th this blood that we have is contaminated. So we needed a, a new blood. The Day of Atonement, we talked about that this morning. The Day of Atonement, we get the new blood of Jesus Christ. And then three days later, we know He rose from the grave. And thank God He did. <clears throat> but anyway, I was, I, was, I was at church and people, people kept telling me, man, we've been praying for you. We've been praying for your family. And then... That was on a Sunday morning. That night I went to a different church three hours away at Tom's Creek. Yes. 
It's a church that we used to be a part of. We're, we're really still a part of them. I still listen to the pastor a lot. Uh, and, and, and I've been to church with a ministry there the last couple of weeks. But there were people there. There was literally, it's a big church, about four, 300 people on Sunday. But I had probably 50 to 100 people tell me the same thing. Man, we've been praying for you. We've been praying for your wife. Man, there's no doubt. People, people were praying for me. Jesus brought me through what I was going through. And, and, and when I tell you I was laying there curling up to die, I'm not, I'm not trying to write a book about this. That's not, not what those pictures are about or anything. I'm not going to write a book and tell you all that I've been to heaven and that I came. I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you that Jesus Christ pulled me through two strokes. And I'm here to tell you that in him is life. In Jesus Christ, there is life. And the life is the light of men. Yes. So, so that was the message God gave me on the deathbed, really. I was on my deathbed. And uh, I began to share that with people. I, I, I was actually, I was <clears throat> laying in the bed trying to call people and tell them, Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do your roof next week and I'm not going to charge you anything. I didn't know that I, I wasn't even able to get out of the bed, really, at that point. My wife's like, she was probably just shaking her head at me. But, but what, I, what I realize and what I'm trying to tell you today is nothing really matters outside of that verse. In Him is life. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you're going to miss it all. Yes, sir. That's the message. And, and what, what I realized that day <clears throat> Man, I wanted to help all these people. I had, I had three or four roofs already in, under contract to go do when I got out the next week. I've only done one since then, and, and that was last week, and I didn't, I didn't even put a foot on the ladder, just so you all know. Uh, my wife won't let me drive. She won't let me get on the roof, and I'm okay with that because we're going to do it the way the doctors tell us to do it, Okay. But what I'm, what I'm telling you is I was trying to call people and tell them, hey, I'm, on, I'm, I'm not charging you nothing. You pay for the materials, I'll do the roof for you. And, and what I realized is I was laying there, is, is, man, we, we, we get sidetracked a lot of times. We get, we get caught up in worldly things and in money and in careers and in jobs and in all these things that control us. But the only thing that really matters is do we have life? Do we have the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in our lives. And if we do, then we have life. Yes, and if we do, then we should be reflecting God's light to other people. I remember just, I think it was last weekend, I was home, and, and my kids, we were in the car going to a basketball game. And uh, I said, I looked over, I could see the full moon. I could see a full moon outside the car, and I said, it was dark outside. And I said, what, what, do you think is ref, what, what do you think is reflecting in that moon? And it was the sun, the S-U-N, right? But listen, you compare that to your life. Our life ought to be reflecting the S-O-N, the Son of God. We ought to be reflecting Him in Him was life. That's what verse 4 says. And the life was the light of men. God's put us all here to reflect His light to other men. And really, that's, that's really all this verse means. But man, it's so big. And we get so distracted. A lot of times we get so distracted with the world around us and what the world says we ought to be doing. And we talked a little bit about that this morning and these phones. Everywhere I, everywhere I go now, every restaurant, everywhere I go, there's people. They're on, even going down the road, a lot of times, people are on their phone, they're in their phone, and that phone kind of runs people's lives. But listen, that ought, that ought not be what's running our life. The Word of God right here ought to be running our life. And, and, I, and I, I'll just tell you, um, we got the greatest message in the world. The greatest message in the world is Jesus Christ. Yes. He is life. And listen, Jesus just, he didn't just come to give us life when we die. Right. 
but he is eternal life. And li eternal life is in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John 17, 3, let me just go there, because I'll mess it up. I don't want to mess it up. Let me just read this verse to you. I was, I was actually looking at doing a Bible study on that. It says, <clears throat> this is the prayer that Jesus prayed to the Father. He says, these, listen to this. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, and thy Son also, also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Can I just say something right here? There's still people that need to be saved. And God has given this to his son so that they will be saved. Listen, all right, I'm going to keep reading verse Verse 2 says, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. What I can tell you is, 15 years ago, I didn't have eternal life. Some of you have heard a story that I shared about your preacher right out here in this parking lot. And I, I really, I, it's not in my notes, but I'll just be honest with you. I was, on my, I was really on my way back to prison 15 years ago. And, and this preacher, I ran out of gas right over here coming down this road. I don't even want to tell you where I'd been and what I had and what, what was going on in my life. But some preacher come out of this house over here as I was walking through the parking lot. He gave me five gallons of gas and invited me to church at Four Mile Baptist Church. So why, why does that matter? Well, let me tell you. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. He was being a light to me. He had invited me to come to this church. It was, it was ten years later. I shared this here one time. It was 10 years later I came to this church. And because Brother Joel, he, he had come back to Four Mile. But because Brother Joel had invited me here, man, I felt welcome here. And, and, and honestly, that's what we ought to be doing today, tomorrow. As we go out of this church, we got to be a light to people that are out there that are hurting. And listen, I was in this verse 15 years ago. That's my point. I wasn't saved yet. I didn't have eternal life. But he says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as, Jesus, as many as thou hast given him. What I'm telling you is there's people out there that don't have eternal life yet. But, but God's sending us to be the light to them. And not just, not, not just to shine our light on them, but to tell them who he is. And that's what I started doing in the hospital. I was laying there, and I, I really thought I was dying. Um, I believe I was dying, honestly. I, I, I can testify to that. I had curled up to die a couple times, and that old thing kept jerking my arm. And, and I'd look, and that light was on, and I'd say, man, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I, 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 I had curled up to die. I thought I was going to be with Jesus, and that would have been awesome. But listen, what I know is God still has... A plan for my life for me to go tell people about Jesus Christ. And that's a great honor and a privilege today. That I can go out of here today and go tell people. I can share with these men at Pilgrims. And, I, and I'm, I'm, you know, it's funny that, that I mention this, but I think about this. 14 years ago, I, don't, I can't even do the math. Y'all tell me. How long has it been since 2009? April the 6th. 2009, how long ago was that? 22, 23 minus 9. Do, huh? Thank you. See, I was right on it. I was guessing. About 14 years ago, God changed my life. I was actually saved the last week in March, 2009. And I went into Victory Home, which Pilgrim Ministries, we didn't have a, a program then. We had an aftercare program. I was at Pilgrim's waiting to go in. <clears throat> God had saved me, 
and I was fixing to go through six month program. But I tell you all that to tell you this. Somebody said they got saved on April the 6th. 2000, I'm sorry? March, was it you, Johnny? April the 6th. I just, I just heard that as they were giving testimony. But my point is, and, and I mentioned this, is, is man, <clears throat> I get to invest my life in, in other men. And I heard a, a, one of the guys testify that, that his, his dad was in the program and he had invited him to church and he got saved. And I think about my daughter. She was 10 years old when I was at Victory Home. And I'll just be honest with you, this is not in my notes either. But this is the way we ought to live, guys. I had been in my addiction. She was born in 1998. I had been in my addiction just about her whole life. The first five years of her life, I was in and out of my, well, I was in my addiction. The second five years of her life, I was in and out of jail and in and out of prison. Ten years had passed. I, I got to Victory Home. I started calling her. And I started telling her how God had changed my life. Probably similar to this story here. I don't know. I hadn't heard that whole story. But I started telling her. I was crying. And I was sharing with her that I had life. That I had eternal life. And guess what? She got saved here in Somerville before I got out of Victory Home. And when I got home, I got to come and see her get baptized. And all, I, all I'm telling you is, when you're investing in a man's life, you're not just investing in him, but you're investing in his family, you're investing in his kids, even his parents. I've seen parents come to know Jesus Christ because their son was in Pilgrim Ministries. And it ain't, it ain't about Pilgrim Ministries. It's about Jesus Christ. He's the one that can save. He's the only one that can save us today. But I'm telling you, I've seen it affect both sides going down the generation and going up a generation. And listen, brothers and sisters, coming to know Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and I often say it's exponential. Man, listen, that's what, God, that's what Jesus is telling the Father there. Man, I'm, I'm going to save people that I hadn't, I hadn't even saved them yet. But you give me the power to save them. And He's given us the power to let Him live through us. I can't save anybody. I've got, a, I've got a six-year-old, probably went to children's church a while ago, and he just asked Jesus to come into his life. And listen, if I could save him, I'd save him. But he would only die again. And I can't resurrect him. But I know the one who can. And, I'm, and you know what? He called on Jesus to save him. And you know what? I believe he's saved. Not because, of, because I'm a Christian, not because his mama's a Christian, but because... He called on the one that can save him. He can save him. He did save him. And I'm going to keep telling him that. And he's going to get baptized. But, 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 but what I'm telling you is I, I can't save anybody in here. I can't give you, I can't resurrect your life if you die. But I know the one who can. And we're talking about him today. We're right up in the middle of his word right here. It's written in red. I'm going to try to finish up. Just in time for some chicken. Y'all ready? All right. Or whatever. I'm sorry. Verse 3 says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Listen to this verse again. This, this is the gospel right here. This is the gospel. This is it right here. He says, and this is life eternal, that they might know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom He has sent. Listen, you won't get to the Father without you go through the Son, Jesus Christ. That's the only way we can know God is through His Son, Jesus Christ. That, that's what we're preaching. That's what we're teaching to these guys. Listen, if we go out here today and witness to somebody, all we can do is witness of Jesus Christ. Because he's the way to the Father. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to ask Brother Joel to come. And help me with this invitation. Not because I don't know how to give one. Because he's your pastor. 
But I'm here. And listen, if, if God's calling you today, maybe you don't even know God. Maybe you haven't given your life to Him. Today's the day. That's right. God, God says today is the day of salvation. Exactly. He's not striving with men. But listen, maybe you've been saved. Maybe, maybe God's calling you to be a light to someone tomorrow or today, even today even. But someone this week that you can have influence on. Listen, it's amazing how God lets us have influence on people. People come up to me all the time and say, man, I heard what you said at so-and-so and and I'm like, 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 who are you? You know, I'm, I'm thinking, I, I don't even remember seeing you. And, and, and they'll say, so, but listen, here's what I can tell you. You have influence over people. You got, you're going to have influence over people this week. And people's, people's watching you. If you say you're a Christian, they're watching your life. That's right. You ought to be reflecting light to them. Listen, it's not just about telling people about Jesus. It's like we said this morning, Brother Ricky. It's about changing people's lives. You ought to look like Jesus. You ought to have a light that will reflect right. His love to other people. Amen. So you come and let's have an invitation. Let's all stand. Come on. God speaking to your heart. Now's the time to come. We're going to sing a verse of invitation. God speaking to your heart. Listen, now's the time to come. You know God is dealing with your heart. You know now's the day of salvation. Why don't you come? Just settle it. Come on right now. This is the record that God hath given unto us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Do you have his son? Do you have a relationship with him personally? You've heard the message this morning. Boy, it couldn't have been any clearer. The life is in the light. The light of the world is Jesus. Do you have him? Thank you, Brother Shannon, for being on target. Two weeks ago, first Sunday of the year, let me show you where God is. Let me show you how God's working. Church, our church, four mile. Two Sundays ago, first Sunday of the year, I stood right here and read them same verses, Brother Shannon. You didn't know that. John chapter 1, first four verses, first five verses. I preached on, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Listen, it's all about Jesus. Do you know him? Do you really know him? Has he really changed your life? You see, it's exactly what Shannon said. This is all about it. It's, boy, his heart, boy, I'm telling you, poured out his heart to us this morning. If he could save you, he would. If I could save you, I would. But Jesus can. If you'll just give your life to him this morning. We're going to sing, God speaking to your heart. Just step out from where you are. Maybe things aren't right in your life. You need to get them right. Right now's the time to come. Come on right now. Come on. Come on. Softly come and on right tenderly, now. Come on. Jesus Let God do that work is in your life. Come on. God's calling for you and for me.